spine up tall, shoulders back. Relax the arms and legs, broaden across your shoulders. Broaden across the base. In that sense, <clears throat> Sitting with your feet tucked in close doesn't help your base. You want to move your feet outward so it feels like this whole leg here, this whole expanse is your base. Mm -hmm. So these guys, have to be able to go down. And if you tuck in very close, it feels like your base tips is not level. That's the point. The base doesn't want to tip back, doesn't want to tip forward. Level base. In this regard, <laughs> Some of you <coughs> gay, Marsha, take some more height. Put one blanket underneath you. Oh, fold that blanket gay. Fold, be more efficient with your blankets. Fold them. That looks better to me, Marsha. What do you perceive? Okay, now you experiment with feet a little bit away from you or towards you and you figure out where that hip groin settles more. And gay, I'd say the left hip is tighter than the right. Is that true? So you want to come up high enough that the hips are level. Get yourself a bolster, sit on the bolster. I have to rescue my plant. Just one second here. Go this way. Look out the window. Please do something else. Uh, a bolster. And then, and this is for anybody, including um, Marsha, uh, uh, Karen, and she, well, really, every, all of you get an extra blanket. We're just gonna go. I can't see it, Karen, but get an extra blanket. You have to sit high on a bolster, if you're on the bolster, sit on top of the bolster, not on the forward edge. The legs may tip at this point. That's what this second blanket is for. Open it. Roll it. Not all the way, necessarily. You need to create a thickness that's going to be placed in between your foot and your shin to level. Now, if you tuck it in too much, you'll tip, right? If you, one way or the other, you make this roll too thick, it lifts the knees unnecessarily, right? So it's a, it's a fine tune. Also, <clears throat> this center shouldn't push on the shins. Here you sit, right? And I've, I've got my, uh, Mary Dunn calls this, you build a front porch for the house, right? You don't, you don't end the house right at the front door. You put a little front porch there and it wants to be level. 
So when it rains, the water doesn't collect in your groins. <laughs> You'll get rot. <laughs> so you create support to level your front porch and keep this space open. Join your palms, close your eyes. Normalize and connect the breath. In this way, pay homage to the practice of yoga and to that root teacher, Patanjali. Bow your head. Release your hands, raise your head, open your eyes. Take <clears throat> Adamuka Virasana like usual. Whatever your support is needed, uh, uh, which is my sort of covert way, I shouldn't be covert about it. I should speak directly and say, get bricks, put them underneath your hands, the whole palm. And when you take Adamukha Virasana, take it in with these hands elevated, which is gonna help you open the armpits, the ribs. And if the chest wall is flexible, it'll move inward. It won't bump up with just your head coming down. If that is the case, support your head. Otherwise, keep those arms up, armpits up, shoulder socket, not squeezing the spine, but lifted straight up, shoulder blades against the back ribs back ribs extending. All parts of the palm grounded, knuckles. Now pay particular attention. This is gonna be a focal point today. Keep that whole palm grounded and <clears throat> locate the base joints of all four of your fingers. And obviously we always insist you keep the index finger base joint down. The other easy one to keep down is the little finger, pinky, fourth finger. The two in the middle, I'm asking for your attention on them today the ring finger, fourth, third finger, and the middle finger. Okay, now, Adumukha Svanasana, and you want to wake up the hands as you just did. And when you get on the feet, the feet as well. Up you go, organize those palms and stretch back. You're weight bearing on the shoulders, so tend to that. Go back through the ribs. Your knees could even be bent at this point. But now you're going to work to straighten the whole operation legs too. Organize those feet. Stretch your metatarsals the way you do that palm. 
take your heels back, stretch the leg up, stretch your toes forward, go to every toe. Stretch every toe forward. If you do this, the leg is transformed. The hip is transformed. Stretch through those toes. You can't really connect completely to that toe without the uh, interest and involvement and intent of the whole leg. Come to half Ardha Uttanasana. Wait on the heels, then extend forward through those metatarsals. So weight comes to the base joints without losing the heel and stretch your toes forward. If you look at your toes very closely, you may notice that they are different colors. They show the amount of pressure against the floor by their uh, circulation and color changes, not just the sensation of pressure, but you'll see things in, uh, in the toe nail changes in color or, yeah, okay. So stretch those toes so that they become even in all respects. I, this very dull left foot doesn't sense much, doesn't act much. I have to work with that color of the toes. That's how I have to work hard enough to change the color of the toe. All right, come up. Now it's time for a trikonasana. You may use whatever support is suitable. Chair, wall, brick. stuffed sea turtle. Take your feet apart. Now locate those feet and stretch your toes. If you're anything like me, it'll feel like your toes get sort of compressed from inside out. There's an outward pressure. Mm -hmm. So you have to argue with that and even the foot so that all the metatarsals and toes stretch. So here is an interesting exercise. You have five toes reaching forward. Corresponding to your pinky toe is a part of the heel. Corresponding to your big toe is another part of the heel. Corresponding to each of your toes, five toes, there is a section of heel. Push backward 10 virtual toes. Push forward your real toes. Stretch backward through each of those sectors of the heel. 
corresponding to the toe. Then turn your right leg to the right and repeat. Find your real toes. Then project back. Push out 10 virtual toes. Keep that hip socket, back leg hip socket in level. Right heel, right toes, stretch your arms. Keep, you've got 20 toes now, okay? Take Trikonasana. Don't let go a single toe. Extend through the trunk, roll those ribs, look up. Inhale, come up with 20 toes. Turn your feet. Straighten up, arrange your props for side two, but go back to this symmetrical pose and see if it's any easier to get those toes back. If you like me, it's a little bit easier, but on the other hand, some remodeling is starting to occur. So there's some deeper level sort of new things waking up. Old habits trying to get stronger. Mm. Keep working. This is tapas. This is friction that creates heat and that creates transformation. Much different sensation from injury. If you feel something's dangerous in a joint, that is a whole other thing and you should come out. <laughs> but if there is remodeling, reshaping, persist, turn that left leg to the left from the hip, connect all 20 toes. When you push through that left foot, we often lift the heel up to get a better push through the toes. Put that heel down, put it down from the buttock to the heel, buttock to heel. Buttock to heel, both legs. Stretch your toes. I was pointing this out yesterday. If you look at my left foot, the dull foot, every chance it gets, the toes come up. I have to be like a, a sheepdog barking at my left foot the whole time. You might also <laughs> stretch your toes, project through the heel, lengthen through the trunk. Yoga teachers are like sheep dogs, barking, stay in line, stay with the, <laughs> get your foot in. Inhale, come up all 20 toes. Turn the feet, bring the feet together. 
This is frequently a way to resolve joint issues higher up. I hope you're noticing that at least there's a direct connection to the hip and how the hip behaves as you make the heel and the toes ground evenly. Now, <clears throat> Parshva Konasana, quicker, but still 20 toes. Take feet apart, stretch your arms, 20 toes, turn to the right, 20 toes still, passing through Virabhadrasana two, observantly reach out long through the trunk. Don't neglect your toes and come to support. I suggest medium to high support. Push on that support. Taking all the support you can through that right arm, stretch your legs to the floor, evenly 20 toes from the hip, stretch out through your real toes first, then the virtual toes, then the arm comes vertical so you can super open that trunk and overhead. Connect to all five left foot toes and the left heel. Come up. You can come up through Trikonasana or you can come up through Virabhadrasana. Turn your feet, bring the feet together, take a moment. Then side two. All your toes. That connection, that short hand for extending from the hip all around, buttock, hip socket evenly. Then Parshva Konasana. Reach up, keep your toes, keep that hip socket connected to those toes. Come to a medium to high brick. Don't go low, push hard on the brick through that left arm. It relieves some of the pressure in the legs and it gives you time to reestablish it correctly. Heels, toes, stretch your toes from the hip. Now the arm comes to vertical, super open across that chest, long and take the arm. What are your toes doing? I'm coming up, you stay a few seconds. Roll that chest open. Roll that chest open. Now come up carefully. First the arm, then you can either come up to Vira 2 or Trikonasana. Turn your feet, bring your feet together. All right, so <clears throat> I want to take Virabhadrasana one, but more from the point of view of the back leg. So your heel is coming to a wall. I'm just getting a little bit to her ankle. Right foot forward, 
left heel back and that heel just grazes the wall. The way of thinking about it is those virtual toes have to grow to the wall, right? So <clears throat> uh, that, that's just a, an imagination exercise. Let's get super technical. Put your heel skin one sixty fourth or one sixtieth of an inch away from the wall. Small space. And then project backwards so strongly your skin closes, your bones slide. You don't pick up your skin, you move your bones to the wall. Now from the hip, stretch that back leg. For many of you, this is enormous, all by itself. Put your hands on the front wall of your pelvis. Now you could do it with a strap. This is a convenient thing, okay? And you could take that strap around the front pelvis and pull your buttocks down, front pelvis up. So don't put it on your navel and cut your belly back. It's meant to move your pelvis bones a bit more easily, give some assistance. So that strap goes around the front pelvis and your hands catch it and drag this side and back pelvis long. I hope this makes sense. You don't want to drag your thigh down. You want to feel like that front pelvis gets some vertical support. And weight comes. Yeah, Karen has crossed her strap behind her back. And that drags closer to the sacrum. And if you keep the strap separate, it's more the ilium, the outer hip that gets dragged. So either is lovely, helpful. Okay. Change legs. It, uh, I hope it is helpful. <laughs> you tight hip people, it should be noticeable. Now that right heel is away from the wall at first, not in contact. When the leg is straight, it is not in contact. And you have to do that extra work to bring that heel, that whole leg straight, back knee, back thigh, straight. All 10 toes projecting, grounded and lengthening on the floor. Then your virtual 10, grounding, established. And you use that belt from the feet, toes. Push the strap either sacrum side or outer side. In either case, that front wall, it's not just the pelvis, but like the front thigh skin of that back leg. The front thigh skin helps lift that pelvis, right? The back thigh stretches to the heel. That front thigh is coming up. Come out. So you're going to repeat this. 
and take your hands back to the wall. So no strap. Two things you've already learned about this back leg, pelvis straight, front pelvis lifting. You got that part. Now it's got to come up into the trunk. So this sternum, this breastbone, and I'm going to say most particularly, if you see my slight shadow, see that bump there? That bump is the impression of a joint between my sternum, the breastbone, and a small bone at the top called manubrium. And your collarbones are connected to the manubrium. And there's that little ridge that divides manubrium from sternum. Yeah, you all feel that for some it's prominent, for others it's, it's there if you feel for it, it's not always visible. The manubrium, think of your sternum there. That's a better picture with my knuckle being the joint between the manubrium and the sternum. So when you breathe, that sternum comes forward and up and the manubrium turns up, right? Here's your collarbones right at the top, right? So when your chest opens, think, this top bone is going up. It's not going forward. Your sternum is coming forward, but that top bone is going up. Okay, see if you can sort of incorporate that into the directions you feel. Legs, feet, pelvis coming up to the sternum. Now think about this, shoulders back, sternum forward, manubrium up, the arms go down and back, and the manubrium is leading a back bend up and over, up and over, anywhere you want to go. For goodness sakes, your head could touch the wall. Mm -hmm. Let your throat back, reach the arms back away from the manubrium. So they go down. Now, Amelia, your right hand is lower than the left hand. So lift that right side of your chest. Come up, everybody. You two a little bit shy at that. Right side is short. So make sure the right hip is well back. The left hip is well forward. Or else there will be a little scrunchiness as you go back. There will be unevenness. Side two. Build this from those feet up. Do not touch the wall at first with that right heel. Make yourself have to use the leg for that from the hip. And you know what? It's going to change. Your foot is going to slip over time. And your hip is also going to open over time. So you may need to adjust your stance to maintain the effort. In any case, all your toes, all the leg come up into that pelvis, lift up through the ribs. The sternum moves forward, especially assisted by those shoulder blades, but the manubrium is coming up out of your feet through the hips, navel diaphragm. The head goes back as when it is ready. Keep the right side lifting Amelia, reach through the left hand, 
reach the left arm down, touch the wall with both arms and crawl down the wall with your left arm. You can't go up with the right. That's better, but now into the trunk, translate and come up. That was better. Come out. So <clears throat> the rest of you, are you all okay? We've not made trouble. I don't intend to make trouble, but I'm gonna see if we can deepen this pose. I need to change sides, beg pardon, but you're gonna do your right side first as usual. So we're back toward this, your Padrasana one shape with straight legs, right? Reaching back through those thighs, heels, reaching forward from the hips through the toes. Now the arms come up. So if you keep this rotation of the triceps in, it makes it much easier to move the sternum and the manubrium correctly. If your arms are turned, the shoulders stuck the wrong way, you won't be able to get this lift. So roll those triceps. Feel free to use a strap to assist. I have no objection, right? To an assist to that strength to make it easy to do what is coming, which is a backbend course. But the arms go to the wall. They go up the wall, up the wall. And when they can't go up anymore, stop going up and just live there for a bit. Figure out how to breathe comfortably, how to keep your neck and skull open and keep your legs strong. The support pillars strong. You can see Emilia, the arms drifting slightly right. Take both arms toward the door. Inhale, come up. Okay. Let me say one thing. I see some people very tender with the neck. So look. I'm gonna pick this. I guess I have to move it back. So if I, I bet you've done this before, if you put this strap around the middle of the arm and then you take it overhead, if you put it in the right place and if it has the right tension, I must tighten mine, then your head will stay supported and you can rest it. Now, the unfortunate thing is, now you've got to take your legs apart <laughs> and set yourself up and stretch up. It actually gets much easier if you ask me. Is that true? looks better for a bunch of you. So that skull rests in that little strap nest. Should not be too loose, too tight. Go up, go back, go up, go back. And, and come back out again if this is easy for you and lengthen your stance one inch, not much. Hmm? If you're coming to the wall easily, lengthen your stance. 
Hmm? Chaya, Chaya approves. Chaya is happy. Good. Do it again. Make sure you get both sides out of this. Because, you know, the next thing we're going to do is bend the front knee and really stretch that back leg. So work hard here. Stretch that leg. Eh? Open that back knee. Lift your shin. And if this irritates your knee, you must come out and go back to that 164th of an inch thing. Keep your heel away from the wall independent of it. So it just knows the wall is there, but don't, uh, cause that can irritate. Support your skull, reach back, open your chest, normalize the breath, throat open. This looks good, armpits open. Now you go back to your first side and there will be a knee bent thing. After you get this uh, fingertip to the wall, we're hopefully touching the wall. Mm -hmm. So I turn, then I take that strap and I get it set up and I stretch up. And I get manubrium minded. And then I bend this knee. And what I'm thinking is, I'm bending this knee away from the manubrium. And I leave the wall eventually. Go. Watch that knee. Don't let the knee drift inward. Pay attention to your 10 toes. Once you get toward the wall, or as far as you're going to go in that first phase, keep the chest lifted, bend the knee. As it bends, just keep the open space. You may easily, quickly leave the wall. This is not a problem. It's only a problem if you lose the extension. Go as far as you can. Keep the all 10 toes. Watch the drift of the knee, Chaya. Pay close. I think it's because your feet are slightly apart from each other instead of heels lined up you like this. So it makes your front knee try to center itself and move your foot in and the knee out. And go for evenness of contact. Now, is that awful or is it just different? If it gives you knee pain, of course, do not do it. Mm -hmm. But to the eye of the camera, that looks straighter. At least it foot to knee. Change sides. The eye of the camera can be wrong. I hope you get my intent here is all 10 toes even and the weight stacked from the hip to that foot evenly. So I do, it, it, you know, if I were in a room, I would walk around you and I would see much better. So what I have to do now is use my words to make sure. Keep that back leg straight. When I see it from the side, I can see this. Bend your front knee. Even if your hands leave the wall, bend that knee all the way. 
keep working away from the maneuvering, or maneuvering away, and then come up and come out. That's lovely. That's a lot of backbend. I hope you notice that's plenty of backbend. Okay, are you all right? Okay, is Gay all right? She's swirling around. Okay. So, um, just for fun, take right foot forward, left foot back. Sorry, I'll do it correctly. Parvrita Trikonasana. Keep this front hip going back. Keep all 10 toes of your front foot on the floor. You have to push to go through that big toe base joint and push to project back through your heels. Come up. Turn side two. A little bit longer stance, gay. Take full advantage of all this leg work. Move in. Mm -hmm. And you come forward, keeping that outer left hip back. And the inner left foot pushing forward. Right heel back. Very good. Nice and straight, Chaya. Head back, Marsha, and you'll be in line. If that it, I can't see the brick, make sure your brick is touching the outer leg. No gap. Lift that chest, normalize the breath, head back, okay. Shoulders back, yes, good. Stretch your legs, all 20 toes come up. Turn the feet, 20 toes is better than 10 for balance. 20 toes is, is way better, more stable. Adamukha Svanasana. Actually, take that back. Prasarikta Padottanasana, hybridized with Adamukashvanasana, so legs wide apart. And you fold forward, keeping your legs vertical, stretch your trunk forward. This could easily be an occasion for bricks to optimize that extension through the rib cage. Now you must keep the whole uh, knuckle zone, base joints of the fingers grounded and draw those thighs back. And stretch first your 10 toes forward on the floor. You know, it, the truth is, picking them up occasionally is useful. It opens the sole of the foot. So a, a lot of adjustments involve picking up the toes and spreading, opening. But once you're in there, the proper position is lengthening those toes along the floor. 
so so I'll, I'll say set the sole and the heel correctly, then stretch all those 10 toes forward and virtual toes back, big toe side, pinky toe side, and those three very elusive toes in the middle, the real ones as well as the virtual ones. And the fourth toe is the most elusive of all. It's like Sasquatch. Talking at the fourth toe. Now, take your head down, spine as vertical as you can bring it. If it so happens that your head touches the floor, let it. And as the spine opens, let the head turn so the spine can continue to lengthen. And as the pose progresses, it may be that you get a bit more toward the back of the skull. This is just fine, so long as you don't compact the throat or abdomen. So it's not an act of pulling your head through. It's a placement, very soft, long spine. Weight firmly on the feet, all toes. Now, you may transition at will to headstand, shirshasana. And for those who do not do shirshasana, you can transition to preparation for shirshasana. Now, these fingers here in shirshasana as you would do in dog pose, as your toes do, they project forward. So when they're in the headstand, they continue to project. They are projecting toward the, so to speak, the opposite elbow. Their job is to kind of unify the action of the arms, not to be like a like a gorilla glue solder. It's just an extension connection of the arms via the fingers. So you keep that hand quiet and the sense of open length and press the forearm down, release the head, and you come up toward your shirshasana. The clenching of the hand is the clenching of the nervous system, the brain. The thoughts. Abhijata Iyengar has suggested that the clenching of the fingers is, is a reflection of some form of anxiety. So you don't have to necessarily have fear of death or anything, you know, huge like that, but you can have disturbances. It is very helpful to clear those disturbances.
pull up through those shoulders. So you're not just looking for disturbance in the hands, although the hands are extremely sensitive. So they reflect it sometimes, or you can notice it there faster than other places. But everywhere up the arm can reflect your any disturbances. So you need to make sure you stay as clear as possible. So any disturbance that's coming is coming from the pose itself and not just your like thinking. Make yourself calm so it's easier to experience the pose you're in. It is almost time to come out. So if you've got any thing you need to connect to, do it now. And when you come out, please rest your head. And a useful thing to do if the neck is in strain is to look forward again, manubrium and throat, like your Adam's apple wants to go forward. And you look forward and lead forward with your chin as if you wanted to put your sternum on the floor and your chin on the floor. That can frequently relieve uh, stiff necks from headstand. You will know how far to look forward. And then come out, rest. Now, we have 15 more minutes. And I want to work on my current favorite pose, which is Hanumanasana. So get a chair. If you have two chairs, get two. Here's one with a sticky mat on it. Oh, here's another, and it's going to go in front. How far in front does it go? You know, if you're working on a bare floor, it doesn't matter because things will just slide around and you can adjust. But if you're working on a sticky mat, put a good distance between it. It's easier to pull it in than it is to push it away. And if you don't have a chair, an ottoman will do or a wall. If just a plain old wall, I can show this without a chair. So watch, those who are stiff, you know who you are. The ones who had trouble keeping this back leg straight, this hip, that back hip, when it's tight, put a bolster on your chair seat. I'm coming up to the wall. This is my right leg. It goes backward through the chair. See, the chair is facing the wall and I'm going backward through it. Now, it doesn't matter if this foot is on the floor up in the air. Turn your pelvis, turn the back toes under and stretch that leg. See how I'm pushing my heel back, right? 
that's taking me toward the straight leg of Hanumanasana. I'm really opening the back knee. Don't turn your toes under here, but go back as far as you can. Then your front leg straightens. I'm too far from the wall. I can't touch the wall. <laughs> so I scooch. Now holding on to the wall gives me time. I have time. I have a lot of time. I can interact between my legs to lift my trunk. You don't have to stretch your arms. This depends on your spine. Stretch that back leg first. Back leg first. Toes turn under, big toe base joint, second toe base joint. Those two base joints both have to be on the floor. Good, come out, change sides. Those with more flexibility, feel free to lower the bolster. You, you can easily wind up on your chair seat and you know the pose has you flat on the floor. So as things evolve, you can remove the chair and use two bolsters. You know, you can gradually, it's the back leg first, everybody. Back leg first, forget your front leg, bend your front knee and stretch your back leg. Push your hands down on the chair seat and lift your chest and stretch your back leg. Lean forward as you may need to, Emilia. Go forward and see if that helps that thigh lift off the chair. Yeah, be light on the chair and with only with the thigh. Only with the back leg thigh, your front leg thigh stays down. Outer hip stays down. And then you do that belt thing. Uh, gay, bring your toes closer to the chair and push your heel away. Right foot, yes, push through the heel. Yes, stretch your foot, push through that heel. Stretch that leg straight, turn your hips forward. Lift the trunk. That's much better, Marsh, in the back leg now. Is it, is it, you have one good leg and one tight leg? There you go. Well, these, me too. <laughs> okay. I hope you're uh, changing sides now. That was right leg left leg, yes, you might go back to the right leg. So <clears throat> the way to adjust this, if that back leg will not straighten, the, you should just raise support. Now I'm gonna turn on a different camera. This is camera two. And I'm gonna move it so it shows the platform. And cat. So imagine this is just a tabletop. It's just a table. I can work my pose on a table.
it's actually quite lovely when you have enough height to straighten that back leg. When you can really straighten it, that's when you can enjoy a back bend. It's when you can enjoy. Demo. So, yes. For me, it's difficult with the leg that I that I have in my back, the one that I need to straight on the floor to push with my heel. It's almost impossible. I push more. The leg on the floor, this uh, leg. That one, yes. Well, my heel is not on the floor either. Uh-huh. But and the but you must still lift that shin and open the back thigh. Okay. Right. This is bent. This is straight. Okay. Doesn't don't put the heel on the floor. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of this one, beg pardon, and go back to the other spotlight there. Yes, Chaya, back leg super straight. See, that's pretty straight, Emilia, but coming up through that trunk, right? Lengthening through the groin, that is everybody's trouble. Good, Karen, good improvement. Yes, 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 everybody. Does it feel different to you when that back leg can fully straighten? Not just, I, I don't mean pain in the back, but I mean new space. Okay. We must close class safely. Uh, yes, please do your second side if you have not yet. Stretch that back leg. First toe, second toe, base joints, both on the floor equally. Just this section, just that section of the foot has to really be on the floor. Don't roll to the little toe side and don't just sit on the big toe. Get that second toe there and stretch your leg. Then push through that right thigh, down and forward, hips turning, face the table. Good, Emilia, improving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you start looking like you're actually taking one of those giant strides that Hanuman takes. Try, try, strive to look like that, right? It's really fun imagining yourself taking that big leap. You can use your arms if you want to, you know, imagine it, but it's, it's, it's actually a lovely pose when it's, you know, when you imagine what you're doing, you're running the big, big ribs. Now, uh, lie on your back, big party, with um, a brick, two bricks nearby. Mm. Let's just, let's, let's, I beg your pardon. Let's do something different. Here's a chair. 
here's probably not a bolster, but a blanket, maybe two. So you want to put your pelvis on this blanket and your waist, pelvis, waist, and just the bottom of the rib cage. And put the back of the knee on that chair and then slide the chair away so it feels like you've, you're not pushing the thigh into the hip, but you've got a little space there. A little space. Some people enjoy an extra blanket just under the head. So hips lifted, throat relaxed, brain soft. This head blanket is optional. Settle your feet about the width of the chair. Don't join the knees. If there is discomfort, let the knees stay toward each other and separate the feet so they, the heel just hangs over the side of the chair. This is my day of the week where I have a, an appointment immediately following. So I wish to make sure everybody is safe and settled. And then I will say Namaskar, and I will see you next time. Namaskar.